In Revelation chapter 13, the two beasts make their appearance. The first and most important one is a political person, specifically a global dictator who rules all known ethnic subgroups under a totalitarian system. Note that anti in Greek means instead of, rather than against, meaning a counterfeit rather than a competitor, the man of lawlessness. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 and 4 Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. He acknowledged no higher law than his own will, and as a result, claimed divinity and demanded devotion as a result. The beast is a human person who gives into Satan's temptation and accepts the offer that Jesus turned down. Matthew chapter 4 verses 8 and 9. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain, and sheweth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Had he accepted, he would have become Jesus' antichrist. The beast is also anti-Christian in the other sense of this prefix. He has the power to make war against the saints and overcome them. Revelation chapter 13 verse 7 And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. He overcomes them temporarily, but they conquer him eternally. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 And they overcame and conquered him because of the blood of the Lamb, and because of the word of their testimony. For they did not love their life and renounce their faith, even when faced with death. Revelation chapter 13 verses 1 to 10. The beast from the sea and the dragon, Satan, stood on the sandy shore of the sea. Then I saw a vicious beast coming up out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads. And on his horns were ten royal crowns, diadems, and on his heads were blasphemous names. And the beast that I saw resembled a leopard, but his feet were like those of a bear, and his mouth was like that of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his throne, and great authority. I saw one of his heads which seemed to have a fatal wound, but his fatal wound was healed, and the entire earth followed after the beast in amazement. They fell down and worshipped the dragon, because he gave his authority to the beast. They also worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like as great as the beast, and who is able to wage war against him? And the beast was given a mouth, the power of speech, uttering great things and arrogant and blasphemous words, and he was given freedom and authority to act and to do as he pleased for forty-two months, three and a half years. And he opened his mouth to speak blasphemies, abusive speech, slander against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle, and those who live in heaven. He was also permitted to wage war against the saints, God's people, and to overcome them and authority and power over every tribe and people and language and nation. All the inhabitants of the earth will fall down and worship him, everyone whose name has not been written since the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb, who has been slain as a willing sacrifice. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is destined for captivity, he will go into captivity. Then I saw another beast rising up out of the earth. He had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. 
He exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence, when the two are together. And he makes the earth and those who inhabit it worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. He performs great signs, awe-inspiring acts, even making fire fall from the sky to the earth right before people's eyes. And he deceives those who unconverted ones who inhabit the earth into believing him because of the signs which he is given by Satan to perform in the presence of the first beast, telling those who inhabit the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded fatally by the sword and has come back to life. And he is given power to give breath to the image of the beast so that the image of the beast will even appear to speak and cause those who do not bow down and worship the image of the beast to be put to death. Also, he compels all, the small and the great, and the rich and the poor, and the free men and the slaves to be given a mark on the right hand or on their forehead, signifying allegiance to the beast, and that no one will be able to buy or sell, except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 17. His characteristics are similar to those of other fearsome beasts, such as leopards, bears, and lions. He appears to be from a federation of political rulers who have captured the world's attention through an astonishing recovery from a fatal wound, most likely in an attempted assassination. For 42 months, his blasphemous egoism has been broadcast. The second beast strengthens his position as a religious colleague with supernatural power who directs the world's worship toward his superior. His miracles, such as commanding fire to fall from the sky and images of the dictator to speak, will deceive the nations. His appearance will be like a lamb, a small sheep with only two horns, this would seem to indicate mildness rather than Christ-likeness, since it is contrasted with his dragon-like speech. His master stroke will not be his display of miracles, but his dominance of markets. Only those who carry a special number on a visible part of their body, hand or forehead, will be allowed to trade, and the number will only be marked on those who engage in imperial idolatry. Jews and Christians will therefore be excluded from all commerce, even in the event of the purchase of bare necessities of life. The number 666 is the dictator's coded name. The section about this beast concludes with a prophecy. Take note of the command to pay attention to this warning. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. Jesus used the same language to call people to listen to the important message he was about to teach. The same is true here in Revelation concerning this important message. If anyone is to be taken captive, to captivity he goes. If anyone is to be slain with a sword, with a sword must he be slain. In summary, this war that the beast will make against the saints is going to be very bad. Therefore, Christ calls for faithful endurance. Here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints. The world is standing for the beast, worshipping the beast and honoring the beast. The Christians will not do this, and suffering will come from this. Life Lessons Do not worship the world and its ways. We cannot allow our worship to be linked to the politics of this country. We must not worship any leader as our personal deliverer or savior. Our hope is in God. Endure. Even in the most trying of circumstances, God encourages his people to maintain steadfastness. The story that we are currently reading describes a regime whose official policy is to wage war and slay Christians. We must be faithful to God no matter what obstacles stand against us. If we are persecuted, we must endure for Christ. If we are comfortable, we must endure for Christ. 
Be faithful in times of prosperity and times of persecution. Take a stand. Do not go with the direction of evil. Be willing to be different. Be willing to make a stand. Be holy in your conduct.